Welcome back to another video, you guys. Today, I'm going to be working on an iPad mini 4 that has no Wi-Fi. In the settings, the Wi-Fi is simply grayed out. This repair isn't too complicated if you have the right tools and the skills to do it. When you're dealing with a Wi-Fi issue, most of the time, all you have to do is pull the chip, reball it, and solder it back on, and it doesn't have to be replaced. There's a little bit more involved with that as far as prepping the board for re receiving it, fixing any pads that might have been pulled in the process. But overall, it's a, it's a pretty standard repair uh, for those that get into this type of solder work. But what you see in this video is what you're going to see with most cases where there's no Wi-Fi. <laughs> Just gonna test it real quick, just to make sure everything still works after prying up the screen. Wi-Fi is still grayed out. <laughs> we'll wait for the backlight to shut off. There we go. Now we can disconnect the battery. And disconnect the display. Definitely tell that that is a replacement home button. The SIM card tray even got glued in, making it really hard to get out. Now we'll just go through the process of removing all of the screws from the motherboard and getting it out of the frame so that we can work on it. Some do this repair inside the housing, but I find that that is just a little too risky with the battery so close. The amount of heat that's going to dissipate through the frame into the battery and even just make the job harder because the, the heat is dissipating that much quicker out of the board when I need it to get hot in that area. I've always just taken the safe route, which is the long route, and, and remove the board from the frame. We'll disconnect the speakers, disconnect the antennas. And that glue is just holding everything down. Stopping the charge board from coming out. I'm sure it's gonna hold up the logic board in some places. And flood the edge here with isopropyl alcohol. And remove this little guy just so he's not getting pinched in the frame. And we'll let the little bit of tension that we're applying with the spudger and the alcohol do the kind of the trick to help lift uh, lift up the board. If you want to speed this up, you can always add some heat to the underside of the logic board. But it's not necessary if we're just trying to take our time. The alcohol will kind of do the trick, as you can see. I go over it, adding more as I need it. You can see some of the adhesive stays behind, kind of grabbing onto it. All right, now we've got the board out. Now what I like to do is remove the sticker here. So it's just going to melt. Now we just need to remove the Wi-Fi here. We'll want to not damage the battery connector or the display and digitizer connectors, or even the SIM card tray. So we're working right around a bunch of sensitive components with plastics that melt. So we need to be careful removing this guy. We carefully slide in a tool while applying heat. I use some solder paste to kind of mix it with the factory solder to make it easier to wick away. adding it to each one of the pads. Then I'll take my wick and carefully wick up all of the solder from all of the pads. Flip the board around and do the same on the other side. Now we can clean it up and take a look at the pads that are missing. This pad right here I can tell is a no stuff pad as there's no traces diving out of it. And 
These ones as well look like no stuffs as well, but this one you can see here a trace down in the middle there. I'm gonna have to fix this pad. And I don't see anything anywhere else. Here we're gonna look at a schematic. You can see the pad right here that missing is a no stuff, the blue. Oh well. And let's go and look and we've got these three right here also blue no stuffs but this one right here in number four is important let's take a look at that and if I click on it it pulls us over to looks like right over towards the CPU a resistor here so this is definitely important um, and it looks like I only have I have a test point on the back of the board here just in case I can run a jumper to that test if I need to, if I can't fix the pad itself. Now let's add some isopropyl alcohol here and I'm gonna scrape away and reveal more of that trace. I'm gonna scrape away and reveal more of that trace. Get any of the uh, gunk outside of the where the pad goes and we'll clean that up add some solder paste and with my soldering iron I'm gonna go and try to tin that trace there got a little jumper wire with a little pad on the end here I'm gonna solder that down there and we will uh, cut off any of the excess I'm gonna clean up as best I can around the jumper using a clean room wipe getting all of that flux and gunk off of there add some solder mask so that we can protect our joint there cure it with a UV light now I can carefully fold over our jumper so that we can make a new pad. And I'm also gonna secure this with some UV mask. We'll cure that in place. Now I just need to go in and gently scrape away with a scalpel any of the uh, stuff that's gonna make a, make a high point or prevent it from sticking. We'll clean that up. We can move on to reballing the Wi-Fi C. I'm gonna add some flux and some solder paste. This is a 138 solder paste, which will allow me to easily wick away uh, the factory solder from the pads. Now that I've done that, I'll clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol and a clean room wipe so that I can prep it for new solder. You can see here uh, one of the pads, this is a grounding pad and it's so it still should be good. Uh, I've got my mini four stencil here. Let's line it up, get it nice and centered perfectly so that we can add some new solder and get this perfect. So here I've got my solder paste I'm going to push that into all of the all of the holes in the stencil. Wipe away any excess. This also absorbs some of the flux, making this process much smoother. Now I'm going to come in with some hot air. And isn't that just satisfying? With the stencil away and I'm gonna do hit it again with some hot air Make sure all of the solder is nice and centered now we can just uh, install this on the um, logic board itself to help with this I'm gonna add some flux everywhere this will protect the solder from oxidizing as the heat hits it so that it has a better chance of hitting the board and sticking to it. 
I've got it aligned now with the in the correct orientation. I carefully heat it up. Get a nice even heat, and you can see it kind of drops there. Add some more flux, and I'm going to come in and give it a few taps gently on the side here, right here, and a nice little tap. Boom. Do the same at the top. Get a nice little flow, and we're done. All right, now we've got that soldered back on. Let's uh, install it back inside the frame so that we can check and see if it's if it was successful or not. I've got it basically back together, minus a bracket or two. Go ahead and reconnect the digitizer and the display. Now we can connect the battery. Let's turn it on and see if we've got our Wi-Fi back. All right, let's drop it down. Still grayed out. And there we go. You can see it automatically came on along with the Bluetooth. Now I've got a lot of adhesive to clean up around the border to get this back together along with those brackets. But uh, yeah, that is a successful repair. So as you just saw, pulling the Wi-Fi C, reballing it, and soldering it back on fixed the issue we had with the Wi-Fi. Fixing pads can be tedious and time consuming. Luckily, I only had to fix one in this case. The majority of the Wi-Fi cases will be just like this, where you just have to pull it and reball it. Techs that have access to the tools to unlock the Wi-Fi may find it simpler to simply replace the Wi-Fi IC without reballing it and unlock the Wi-Fi. A completely acceptable way to do it, and it might save you a little bit of time. Like the video if you found this to be useful. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Yeah.